Now, Robert, you just went through China as an adversary. Is the U.S. responding appropriately to this threat? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Not. Look, we began the process of strategic decoupling in the Trump administration. It is paused now. We need to take the next step. We've transferred over six trillion dollars worth of wealth of America to an adversary. This has to stop. You can't pay for the army and the navy and someone who you're trying, who you're preparing the and afraid you might go to war with. So I think we need strategic decoupling. They have not done enough. <sighs> That was former U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer calling on the United States to reduce its dependence on China for both economic and national security reasons. The House Select Committee on China is looking into American financial companies and their possible risky relationship with China. The chairman of the committee, Mike Gallagher, laid out his concerns in a recent op-ed titled, Americans are unwittingly financing the CCP. It has to stop. Chairman Mike Gallagher joins us now. Chairman, thank you. What your committee is doing is probably one of the most important things that's actually happening in Congress. How are China, how is China taking advantage of the United States and how are Americans funding it? Well, when it comes to our financial relationship with the CCP, our initial bipartisan investigation of MSCI and BlackRock revealed that American money is flowing into Chinese military companies that are building things like aircraft carriers, artillery shells, fighter jets, even advanced nuclear technology. So while reasonable people can disagree about what the precise nature of our economic relationship with China should be, I don't think anyone in good conscience can support the idea that American money should be funding companies that are building things designed to kill Americans in a future conflict. At a broader level, it also means that the health of tens of millions of American retirees is increasingly dependent on the success of the Chinese Communist Party's dystopian totalitarian project, which involves committing genocide, as well as risking a war that would be incredibly destructive. So it needs to stop. We need to stop this process of funding our own destruction. But unfortunately, the Biden administration is reviving economic and diplomatic engagement with the CCP as a core pillar of our foreign policy. You know, we've had a number of uh, uh, key officials uh, go to China, but I can't name a single result that came from that, nor do we actually see people from China coming to the United States to try to build their relationship. And China just went out and issued a new map that is pretty offensive to India, the Philippines, Vietnam. Um, what should happen here, Chairman? What, how are we going to deal with this as a nation? Well, we should stop all these high-level cabinet officials going to China because the reality is that the price of even sitting down with the Chinese Communist Party is that we slow our defensive action. We stop uh, taking action on things like licensing exemptions for Chinese companies like Huawei. We haven't finalized the October 7th export control rule. We need to take action on Chinese supercomputing companies like Inspur. And then this broader question of overall capital flows to China. The Biden administration released an executive order, but it was watered down. It was weak. It needs to be strengthened. And we don't do that because we want to get a photo op with Xi Jinping. Most importantly of all, what we need to do is rebuild our military, our Navy in particular, and there we're simply not moving fast enough. Remarkably, this week I, I saw a report and I issued a statement about the fact that uh, the military is uh, removing gender pronouns for certain awards because that's somehow a priority at a time we should be focusing all our energy on preventing World War III. Uh, yeah, no, good point, uh, Chairman. Expand a little bit about how China surveils spies on America, not just our military interests, but on average Americans. What, how should the person who's watching this program at home, why should they care about that? Well, I would submit if the Secretary of Commerce uh, has had her emails hacked by China, which she did and then still chose to go to China, your average American uh, certainly is the subject of cyber espionage, cyber warfare on the part of the Chinese Communist Party. But to put it in more real terms, if you live in Iowa, we've had multiple incidents where you've had Chinese operatives stealing sensitive agricultural information and technology, stealing seeds in order to bring that back to China to give them an edge in the agricultural domain. If you live in New York City, uh, there was an illegal Chinese police station established in the heart of Manhattan, where CCP entities were uh, using it to spy on 
people on American soil and harass and surveil and in some cases physically assault them. This is an all across the board, relentless espionage and intimidation and coercion campaign. It's not just the official spies they have. It's also something called the United Front Work Department. They've infiltrated our, our uh, institutes of higher education. We need to wake up. We need to push back. We need to do a better job of defending our own sovereignty and our institutions from this CCP aggression. You, you just mentioned the institutes of higher education. I mean, by the thousands, uh, the Chinese are allowed to bring people in here and tap into the intellectual expertise that we have, only to bring that information and that technology uh, surreptitiously or just out in the open back to China. What should the country do about the education of China at the cost of the American taxpayers? At least three things. One, we should start enforcing the Higher Education Act, which requires the disclosure of foreign gifts above the level of $250,000. The Trump administration started doing this and found over $6 billion worth of previously unreported donations. A lot of these foreign donations, it won't shock you to learn, are coming from China. We don't want those to be used as a, as a means of influencing what colleges can and can't do. Second, the Trump administration had a PLA-affiliated researcher ban. We should bring that back. We should make it workable. We should strengthen it. We have to safeguard our research security. Uh, and then finally, to relate to our first topic of conversation, I don't think university endowments, and in some cases, these are the same endowments that are lecturing us about so-called ESG investing. I don't think university endowments should be allowed to invest in China. If human rights is a concern for higher education, if environmental issues are a concern for higher education, well, China's probably the worst environmental actor in the world. So we need to clean up the investments that our university endowments make simultaneously. Real quickly, last question. The China holds nearly a trillion dollars in U.S. debt. How concerned should we be about that? We continue to issue debt, and they seem to gobble it up. I think we should be very concerned. I mean, if for no other reason, we should just be concerned about our crippling debt crisis. Right. At some point, it's going to come to a head. We're paying more money to service the interest on the debt soon than we will be paying for our own military. And really, the next president is going to have to navigate, I think, two crises that could happen at the same time, a debt crisis as well as a crisis over Taiwan with the Chinese Communist Party. We need to be able to tackle both. That's why the 2024 election is so important. It's so important that we replace uh, Biden with a better commander in chief. Chairman Mike Gallagher, doing some of the most important work in Congress. Uh, highly impressive. Uh, thank you, sir, for joining us, sir, on Sunday Morning Futures. Do appreciate it. All right.